Hey guys, yeah, I'm rocking out to some Gal Yavol, you know who, who she is? You know, I've mentioned her a couple times, and you know that I'm the hipster that kind of gets this stuff out ahead, and then like, like for example, how long have I been talking about C6 Steve? Now people are coming to me and saying, Oh, hey, do you know who C6 Steve is? Hello? Yeah, maybe I do. Anyway, shout out to you, Gal Yavol. We're going to be seeing a lot of her, I'm sure. Hint, hint. Now, while we're doing shout outs, I want to say hi to uh, my friend Troy Murra down in Long Beach. Hey, I hope you're not down there at that COVID uh, protest or whatever it is. They go on at Huntington Beach today. Uh, that's a big deal. I guess people are getting antsy. It, it, and you know, it's really all about people want to see Troy and Tyler uh, play music again. So I, I guess that's any good reason for social unrest if there is any anyway Troy I have a message from you from Mrs. Olson I saw her in the restaurant the other day and she I don't know what this is all about but she said hey find out from Troy what the hell he's doing with my Folgers coffee can listen to that slide guitar anyway we are about to put this one in the mail now last thing I got to do basically is put some strings on it and there's a couple things that I do to get these things set up. You know, when you're getting through a guitar, there's this and that and the wiring. And then it gets to the end where, oh, hey, it's almost done. I can just blow this out. But that's where you start getting into trouble. So I am going to do a little something with the neck here that I've never shared with you. It involves making a simple tool. And it involves making sure that your frets are leveled and that everything is going to work out so there is no string buzz and stuff. Now. We uh, have done quite a few episodes on one was called fretting f up. So I'm going to give you that one up there. It's like everything you can do to mess up fretting. And then I showed you how to build a fret press. When you stop beating these things in with a hammer and pressing them in, everything starts working more towards being level. And there's a lot less work to do in the end because all it takes is one odd size fret wire or one of being up and not in the groove right. And you got dead strings all over the place. You're excited to ship it to somebody and then boom it's dead and if you don't fix it they get it they don't play it it becomes a wall hanger and then you know you're one of them right so i'm going to hit the workbench here we're going to have gallia volt a uh, mississippi blend that's mississippi blend if you don't have that one i want to make sure you got a link below so you can get it you keep your eye open for her but let's get to the bench and figure out how to make sure these are nice and smooth Okay, let's pull this off the side. You know what I'm going to do once I get uh, uh, the neck done and, and the fine-tuning done? We'll run through this before uh, I, sh I ship it off at the very end of this episode. But let's get this out of the way. I, uh, I got to get the bottom on it. That involves this old Mississippi map. And uh, I've got this weathered like the rest of it. So it'll all turn out good. But... Um, Here's what here's here's the bottom line here. When you look at the frat board here, you're going to make some assumptions, and we've talked a lot about it, scale and intonation and that kind of thing. But uh, the assumption here is is that you're going to have your neck uh, uh, not set right. You see, I've got that marked off. A couple little hints here. You see, I've got pencil marks there where I'm going to file. Um, Y'all know that I made this little gadget where I can just set this on here and mark this off. You know I have the one with three strings that I can also use for finding the center of things if I want to. That's pretty handy. But I take this, set it there, make marks on the nut, and then I'll put a piece of tape and make sure we're in the spot on the neck right here and do the exact same thing. And then when I get the strings on, I can also take... Uh, because I've got these marks on here and I also used the same thing to set this up like so see if those holes there those marks there and these marks here line up my strings are going to pull straight um, and they're going to be even for the artist so the last thing I got to worry about then is lining all that up not having everything turn over in the background while I'm doing this and getting the grooves on the floating bridge right so that said the last thing that can mess us up in terms of how things sound is whether or not these frets these individual frets are level now 
Whenever you start dealing with something, let me move this down so we're focused on the fretboard here. Can we see most of the fretboard? Yeah. Um, when we start dealing with frets on an individual level, like say we have this handy dandy uh, fret sanding thing. When I start dealing with this, I've always told you that if I'm going to start working one of these, I'm probably going to start counting what I do to each individual fret because if I don't if I do something with 10 here and 2 here and then 6 here I'm gonna end up with something that's not balanced right and that's where my string buzz is gonna come from so one of the last things I do is I want to find a way where I can address a level of frets meaning more than one so I'm whatever I'm doing here is gonna affect up here and up here and you have these gadgets that people sell that are for leveling the neck frets and they're a piece of fancy something or other aluminum block that's fine-tuned down to 87 zillionths of a trillionth or something like that and they typically have sandpaper on them now you can spend a hundred bucks on these things but basically the idea is when you set something on here that's level like so and you go back and forth like this Assuming this is level, these are going to get level. So we're going to make one of these really cheap and quick, and then we're going to knock these down and see what's happening here. So the first thing we're going to need is a piece of really fine grit sandpaper. So I got 400, I like that, 400 wet, dry uh, sanding paper. So it, it's meant to scuff uh, sand between sealers and coats. That's what they typically use it for. So let me get this guitar out of the way, and then this is all going to be pretty easy. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to find out what the longest side of this paper is. Now, I've got some of this on order in a roll, which would mean I can just roll this stuff out on a longer piece of wood. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to make one that's the length of the paper on the longest side. So this is the longest side here so if I lay that out and take my trusty pencil and make a mark right there and then square that off wherever that is I end up with this so I made a mark here here and on the side here and now I'm going to take this to my chop saw so this piece of wood is the same size as the longest side of the paper all right, we got that cut off. We can uh, knock the rough end off that a little bit like so. There we go. And then we'll get this stuff hung up and out of the way. So we've got a piece of wood now that's as long as our sanding paper is wide. So we're going to put this on here like this, right up to the edge. We're going to pull this up like this and then we're going to fold that roughly like there see that so now i can take my mr sensitivity signature pink scissors like so and i'm going to cut that out of the way i'm going to make sure that i put this away because i don't want to get that any more dusty and full of, of stuff than i do now I'm going to try to figure out about where the middle is like so, right? Here's the trick. I'm going to put this here like this. I'm going to use some spray adhesive. Shake this stuff up good. And I'm just going to coat this like this. Okay? Hey, anytime you use some type of spray paint or something, always turn the can upside down and clear the nozzle. Because if you don't, the next time you go to use it, it's not going to work and then you're going to be upset so now i'm going to make sure i got all the dust off of here and i'm going to line that up in about the middle like so and i'm going to push this down like this and i'm going to pull the side up like this and go around and fold this side over i want to make sure that it's nice and tight like that Okay, and right there, I got me a hundred dollar sanding block. Now I can be tricky and run down the edge like 
like this and make sure that that's all all right and, and everything's perfect or maybe not I'm gonna put everything away here and get my guitar back out sorry I can't I just can't deal with that I'll be losing sleep at night for the next five years yeah I'm one of those people there we go good not good I swear I get worse as I get older anyway most important thing about this we don't have a bunch of bubbles and stuff and it's all real nice now I want to keep this as clean as possible but you notice that this fits over a number of frets see so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to start working it like this and I'm never going to focus on one threat oh there goes the low volts can we don't want that to happen I got to work off the back end here but as we do this you're going to see that the frets get really shiny on top and after a while this thing just starts to glide so you just want to do a little bit of this before you put the strings on and then you can kind of look at the the frets as you're going and say okay that appears to be pretty shiny or I got a dull spot right there or something like this so this thing will help you figure out that all your stuff is level I swear it's almost like I'm having an earthquake yeah I'm in California but I just got to put some of this stuff up with this all anyway so we're just going to do that it's just that simple really when you spend the time doing this you're going to find out that you now you don't want to be doing this i'll tell you that because you're defeating the whole purpose so the whole idea is you're just going to be going over a bunch of frets until they're all nice and level okay now final good thing about this even if they're level let's say that I'm taking a file like this and doing the ends of my frets or I'm using one of these gadgets or something if you start looking at these individual frets and you start seeing file marks in it and stuff especially on your high strings the ones that are thinner you having these little notches over here when you're fretting or running a slide over everything after a while strings contacting with those things with those nicks and file marks are going to wear down the string and you're going to have broken strings quicker so even if everything is perfect even if you've pressed these in and done everything right you still should run one of these over this like so and you'll be able to tell that you're in business piece of wood piece of sandpaper no reason to spend a hundred bucks all right guys that was pretty simple we'll get some strings on this now and get it in the mail and um you know a piece of wood and a piece of uh, a sandpaper in a few minutes makes all the difference trust me so uh thanks for watching uh, give me a like uh subscribe to me if you haven't don't forget to click the notification bell and of course remember galluvolt mississippi blend and the link is below. See you next time.